question since I saw the film, which I, I love. I was a big fan of the first one, too. I have a really pressing question. Is Kenny G okay? <laughs> I think Kenny G made it. Kenny He's G, and, and um, we hung at the party with um, Catherine. Did you see that? We had no. an improvisational dance oh, moment. No. Kenny G has embraced his significance in Bad Mom's Christmas. <laughs> he was having a blast at the party at the screen. I'm um, glad yeah, he's okay. Yeah, yeah he's fine. Well, I, first off, I can tell that that dodgeball scene was pretty intense. So my question is, how physical was it, and how do you guys prepare for roles like that? <laughs> well, I had just gotten out of a booth, so I wasn't gonna about to bounce anymore. Right. So I yeah. just opted out for being drunk Sit in and the corner. and standing in the corner. So I had the best view yeah, yeah. Yeah. and one of the easier jobs. Right. And I could enjoy it completely. Yeah. Yeah. But you, on the other hand. Well, my that. character was also afraid of most things. So I mostly got to roll up in a ball. Yes, so that's right. Right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I didn't have to do a lot of training. Right, yeah. right. It's very exhausting, though. The, the girls it is. Are, the it girls takes are a lot. Yeah. 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 yeah, it's a lot. I actually have a question for Susan. Um, so as moms, we put a constant pressure on ourselves, of course, especially during the holiday season. So I wanted to know, even though Bad, Bad Moms is obviously a comedy, um, do you think it's giving an important message to moms today? So important. Just forgive yourself. You don't have to be perfect. Not just, I mean, the holidays, everything comes to a peak in a really, really strong way. But I mean, everything. All the classes and the forms that have to get in and the meals that have to get cooked. and. You know, you do the best you can and you love your kids and you apologize when things don't work out perfectly, but they need you and they need to have fun with you more than they need to have an impeccable house. I mean, we I think we keep, I know I used to spend all my time just these indiscriminate still lifes that were everywhere with like one sock and a piece of this and that, you know, that no one else could figure out how to, where the, those pieces went. You could do that constantly, but finally at the end of the day, your kids don't care. What they care about is to have you listen to them. And sometimes, you know, you can use clearing the dishes, doing this, doing that, you know, as a, you get into the habit of not listening, of not spending time. And by the time they get older and their peers become so important, then you're really like fighting for their minds and souls and attention. So then you have to lock them in the car and drive them somewhere. And then you get a chance to talk to them. Yeah. So I mean, I think the biggest thing we do is just to try to be too perfect in areas that it doesn't really matter. I mean, yeah. you want to serve clean meals. You want to be healthy. Your kids, I mean, I believe my kids were always on a schedule. It wasn't that they stayed up till 11 right. o'clock at night, because otherwise they're a mess when they go to school. But still, in between that, you know, we try to be so perfect in ways that maybe aren't as significant as being able to fool around. And I know that when uh, you become a mom, especially if you're a serious mom, sometimes you lose your fun. You lose your. You become serious, and you lose your silly, and you lose your. You know that part of you, of your personality that was who you were before you had kids and decided to be a mother. And um, so I think it's really, really important to forgive yourself constantly and just say, I love you, I love you, I love you, yeah. and laugh and, you know, relax a little bit. So yeah. it's okay to be a bad mom sometimes. <laughs> yeah. In the fun sense. Yeah. 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 Those things could be a really good mom. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I think so. And, and, you know, the more serious you are about doing a good job, the more you have to lose, in a way, of who you are and all the fun you were before you didn't have any sleep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All of that. Yeah. Yeah. Which uh, mom or grandma that uh, you, you that you relate to for as a character the most? Well, I guess I, I certainly my Isis doesn't even know she's a mom. I don't think. She's <laughs> <laughs> I don't understand where she is. But I guess my my own parenting style would have been probably Mila. Mm -hmm. You know, kind of gets things done and, you know, is funny and has a life, but, you know, it's not perfection. It's not what Christine's doing. It's not quite so clingy as this one. It's, you know. <laughs> no uh, Kiki's on your shirt today. No, no Kiki heads. Uh, so I guess probably it's her. What about you? I'll probably say the same thing. <coughs> I, I understand Kristen Bell's character too, 
even though I only had one child, but I was overwhelmed all the time. <laughs> it's just like, oh my God, what's gonna happen next? Um, but yeah, I don't know. You know, you try to you try to find the balance, right? Being your own person, it is hard to keep your old personality once you have a baby. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You become be you. You have to redefine yourself, and that took a little while for me to understand. Because I, I used to, you know, go out with my friends right. and last minute and let's go, we'll stay out till three and it's like yeah. yes. And then you have a baby, and it's like, oh my God, I'm not doing that. Yeah. I'm not doing anything except watching a baby sleep. Yeah. <laughs> and then you have to figure out, this is my life now, is watching a baby sleep. Yeah. Um, so you have to redefine everything, which is okay. Wait, it takes a while to get there. Right. Yeah, yeah. Um, oh, great, because I haven't had a question oh, yet. Yeah. <laughs> um, going back to what you just said a moment ago was like so profound for me, it's going to make me cry right now. Um, <laughs> Because it, the juggle is real, man. It is so real. It is so hard to like juggle who you were, and then try to find out who you are, and then finding that balance. And like, as as a former perfectionist, I've now my house is uh, I look like it looks like a hoarder's home. Uh, I have three and a half year old twins, and oh, it's just wow. there's food. I, it, it's just yeah. like it's no matter what I do and you talk about like I'm the only person that knows where this item goes right. I've just let it go <laughs> and no um, one knows how to put the toilet paper no <laughs> no no what is up with that sure. it's just I'm like you go over and over and it seems so simple and no one can grasp grasp mm -hmm. that you're like just help me out here with one thing um, but going back to to that that whole redefining and then I think that appreciation that you have for your own moms I think when I had my kids or my girls I was just like oh my god I one day I looked at my mom and was like how did you do this I'm the oldest of four and I, I just don't she's I, I, I took everything for, for granted. We take everything sure. for granted. And so now I can have that dialogue with my mom. But the question is, um, how, how do you appreciate your, your own moms now being a mom? And then second part of that is you're a, gram, you're a grandmother now. And how, how different is, is that type of relationship? So much easier than <laughs> I can't begin to tell you because by now you know it'll work out. Mm -hmm. Seriously, I know it's going to be fine. You can go in and be the silly one, and you, mm -hmm. I mean, my my daughter's an amazing mother, so I don't have to like oversee what she's yeah. doing. She's married to a great guy, but it's so much easier because it makes you understand how when you're a mother, that child is on your brain so you die. Right. Mm -hmm. Doesn't matter that they're older. You're always somewhere that your kids are there. You know, there's somewhere you haven't heard from one of them in a while. They're always there. But with a grandchild, you can just worship them <laughs> and, and corrupt them. them. <laughs> and, and you know it's going to be fine. You know, you know that you could take adventures with them, but then they'll be fine. You don't have to worry about when it, they're due for their next shot or when this is yeah. happening, when is that happening. Yeah. And I think that as a mother, I would just add that the one thing that you can give them that no one else can is who you are, mm -hmm. you know, is is really what makes you so special and that's what you don't want to lose, that yeah. sense of humor. I mean, I don't know what people do who kids don't have a sense of humor because yeah. yeah. you would throw them out, right? Yeah. At some yeah. point, they would have to go. But when they start to get older, I'll tell you all, I don't know how old you but my kids now that are in their 20s, and they're, it's a whole other world. You reread your Vonnegut and your Murakami. They, <laughs> they turn you on to music that you've never seen. They okay. challenge you to things. They have discussions about shit that's coming down and politics. Mm -hmm. And and, uh, you know, and then you're, you go, wow, these people I didn't even know were in there. <laughs> and they go, whoa, who are you? Because they didn't, they, for, the, for them, you came into existence when they did. Mm -hmm. And then as they start to leave home, they're like, Mom, I never knew you were so cool. Or Mom, I never knew you were so cool. This is amazing, you know. Let's, let's, and they want to go places with you and do things in a way that is so different. And that really pays off then. Really hang in with those <laughs> twins. Yeah. I mean, and you were both. Yeah, you appreciate when you became moms, appreciating your mom, your mom's, your own 
Well, my mom, I'm the oldest of nine. Oh my God. Mom, I thought it was chaotic in my home. Wait a my, minute. <laughs> my mother grew up in institutions and in orphanages and foster care, and she didn't have a clue. Oh, and wow. so it was just, wow. you know, everyone survived. Right. Wow. <laughs> but wow. um, she's, she, you know, she did what she could, but she was pretty miserable. She wow. just was miserable. Well, I've had a chance to. You know, my mom came and helped me when my daughter was born, and at first I was, I thought, oh my gosh, she's going to make me crazy mm -hmm. living in yes. the same house with me. And then when it was time for her to go, after two or three weeks, I cried. Oh, yeah. I said, you can't leave. I don't know what I'm going to do without you. You cannot leave. Um, but I call her all the time when I have advice, and she appreciates it. And now that I'm older and I understand you know it's interesting to talk to her about her life and how did you have four kids and a husband that didn't keep a job and she was like I asked the neighbors to take me to work I didn't have a car and it's just like oh my god so things that you don't know when you're growing up mm -hmm. and things that your parents did for you but now I uh, now I know you know you kind of go through your life you go through phases as a kid as a young person uh, you're mad at your parents for who they are. You're mad at your parents for who they aren't. Like, their parents have it together. How come my parents don't have it together? <laughs> you know, it's like, that's not fair. Life isn't fair. Yeah. You don't know what they've been through. But now you can ask them what they've been through. Yeah. It's interesting. Yeah. It is. It's definitely a different dy dynamic. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. And I think it's pretty well accepted that as your kids are certain ages, it brings up in you. Mm -hmm stuff that either you are uncomfortable with or that you're comfortable with or memories that you had or you know at each phase it could happen at 10 it could happen at four but so maybe stuff that you've been sitting on for a long time suddenly comes to the surface mm -hmm. resentments or hurts or whatever and that is something that people don't talk about mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. not just for mothers for fathers too mm -hmm. yes. oh th then you go back and suddenly I remember reading you can get to be kid turns 10 and all of a sudden you can't stand them you can't figure out why you <laughs> why you can't stand your own child and then you realize something about when you were 10 is now surfacing mm -hmm. that is influencing your relationship with them you yeah. know it's interesting it's, it's a, so fascinating it's not a necessary but it's a pretty interesting challenge right. to be a parent mm -hmm.